Hi, my name's Winnie Huang. I'm a performer, I'm a composer, I'm an educator and an artistic researcher. Thank you for joining me here for the next few videos in Studio Talks as part of the Sounds Unheard program. It's an honour today uh, to share with you some of the work that I do, showing you some of the performances that I've done of other people's works, but also some of the performances of my own works that I've composed. Part of these few collections of videos, I wanted to share with you what it means to be an artistic researcher and how I find that to be a really powerful tool in helping me find my own artistic voice and to search for new and exciting projects or ideas to explore further in what I'm interested in. I use myself and my work as an example, as a case study for you to check out and see if you like it, if you're excited by it, or if you don't like it. The whole idea is for you to be uh, perhaps inspired or at least to create new ideas for you to show you what it means to be an interdisciplinary performer but also an artistic researcher. I hope that through my videos but also the other artists on this program you can find people that are of your tribe that you find similarities to and that you might be interested in exploring down their path as well so that you can find your own pathway in your own art making. A little bit about myself, perhaps, to share with you my background. So I was raised in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, I finished my schooling there in my undergraduate bachelor degree uh, in violin performance. That was in classical violin. And when I moved to Europe, I started becoming more and more interested in contemporary violin performance and contemporary ensemble performance. I was lucky enough to find friends and peers that were also excited about similar things. And so we created an ensemble uh, called Sound Initiative based in Paris. Through that ensemble, I was able to collaborate with so many different composers interested in lots of diverse different things. And I could really explore interests and hobbies that I actually had. I realized that push, I pushed aside because I was so focused on violin. Ideas about what my body does on stage, what it means to perform visually to an audience, what it means to have dramatical elements and change the atmosphere by being a live performer. These were things that I was deeply passionate about. And I found composers and also other performers interested in similar things. I realized that I wanted to understand more. I wanted to do what I called, uh, what uh, the world calls artistic research on this kind of subject. And so I did, and I created a terminology for the interests that I have, which I call the musical gestural perspective. And the works that I choose to perform are sometimes called musical gestural works. So hopefully I wanted to share with you some of that today, and hopefully it inspires you to think about what it means to make these strange interdisciplinary works, and inspires you to also look into your own interests as well. <laughs> exploration of what it means to be human and what it means to have a search for something perhaps bigger than who we are. <laughs> the piece that was clearly inspired by religions from all over the world, that's very evident, but it's, it's a very universal piece as well because it brings all of those gestures from all over the world together into one piece and it doesn't really espouse to believe in any specific thing. So sound, movement and drama have always been linked since forever in terms of human artistic expression. To create any type of noise and sound you need to move somehow for it to happen. And for any kind of movement that you want to make, any gesture, almost always some noise or sound is made. And when you're presenting all this on stage, it makes sense that an element of drama or presentation is involved. 
And so for me, it makes a lot of sense to investigate these works that explore all these different elements when you're performing and what does it mean for the performer, the composer or the audience members. I chose the word musical gestural perspective very sp for a very special reason. Sound or noise is almost too neutral of a word. Music is a word that we apply to these sounds to create meaning. And this meaning is important for me. Gesture is also very heavily connotated. Movement can mean that you've done something physically, but gesture can also mean a gesture of kindness. There is much more meaning, connotations, and intent involved with these words. And so I group them together to create what I call the musical gestural perspective. It's a way to look at any piece of art, uh, for me, music, because that's what my path was from, and to view it through this perspective. What are the sounds that they're making? So therefore, what is the music that's happening? What is the movement they're doing? And therefore, what do these gestures mean? And together, what kind of atmosphere, what kind of feeling are they creating for themselves as performers, but also for the audience member to experience, both through their eyes, their ears, and also the magic of the atmosphere? This is not a new thing, but perhaps I owe a lot of my inspiration coming from, my inspiration comes from the 20th century and the huge changes in all the quote unquote disciplines. In the world of dance, we see people like Merce Cunningham and Graham, Martha Graham who really challenge what it means to have a physical body on stage. What does it mean to move and why do they move on stage in the dance world? And then we have people like um, John Cage who questioned what is sound, what is noise, and what is music? Perhaps I don't have answers to these, and maybe you have your own answers to these. What's important is that we see all these different disciplines, and I'm learning from the past, and how they've changed or transformed or pushed boundaries. And so this is why I wanted to investigate this particular perspective that I've called musical gestural. But hopefully, through your investigations, you might want to explore other aspects that are more interesting to you too. When bread baking, orteries is the term used to describe a period of rest following initial mixing of flour and water. This is before other ingredients, such as salt and yeast, are could be added to the dough. Initially coined by French baking professor Raymond Calville, this process was a procedure recommended as a means of reducing kneading time. This thereby improved both the flavor and color of the freshly made bread. Long kneading times subject bread dough to atmospheric oxygen, which bleaches the naturally occurring carotenoids in bread flour robbing the flour of its natural creamy color and flavor. An autolis also makes the dough easier to shape and improves its ultimate structure. If your room temperature is too high, for example in the summertime, simply put the autolis dough in your fridge as enzymatic processes are slowed down. Sour dough starter can also have a tightening effect on gluten and so ideally an autolis should be done without sour dough starter without the interruption of fermentation. What is a performer if they don't perform? Ah, the bread's ready. Shit, I ran out of flour again. Hmm, where is my mask? Keep yourself busy so there's no time to face your problems. Watashi wa nihongo o benkyo Violin o hikki. Mm hmm, oui, je comprends. <laughs> of course you're right, I'm sorry. Worry, 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 worry. <sighs> what can I do for you today? Shodala, mama. Shodala, shodala. Oh, of course. My mistake. Clock sticking!
Do I need to wear a? Have I got the right? Is this a new? Where did I leave my? Do I need to wear a? Have I got the right? Is this a new? Where did I leave my? Do I have to wear a? Have I got the right? Is this a new? Where did I leave my? So in the course of the next two videos, I will show you some of the most specific, more specific uh, works that I perform that are composed by other composers, but also works that I compose and perform uh, with colleagues and peers based around this perspective. But before we go into that aspect, I wanted to explain to you what it means for me to be an artistic researcher, to kind of give you an idea so that maybe you might be excited in also exploring this field too. Artistic research basically is about you as an artist and what you do, the process you go through and the type of art you make. It's about how you question yourself by being curious about a certain subject looking at aspects that you don't have answers to today that you want to answer and finding the right people, the right resources, the right materials and the right ways to help you find out these answers. Perhaps you might not find the answer you want, but you might actually go further and get to somewhere that you didn't know you would get to. If you're interested in a certain type of sound, but you don't know how to get there and how it's done, or how you participate in this sound making by looking at certain influences that you are interested in and reaching out to certain people, maybe that might expand your world into creating your specific type of sound. And the same for visual art or any mixed arts or interdisciplinary arts that you might be interested in. Artistic research is a way in which by making the art, by going through the processes, by doing it, by composing, by performing, by, uh, by playing, by experimenting and looking at all the past experiences that you already have as you, as a fully formed human being. Your enriched understanding of what you do is actually incredibly rich and interesting that you can make your art meaningful today. You do not need to wait for another 10 years or someone to say that you're allowed to. Who you are today with your uh, curiosity and with your interest and proactivity to look for more answers, to look for more inspiration, to look for more ideas can actually lead to a lot of creative and innovative ways of making art that you can then share with the world. A huge part of artistic research is also about how you choose to share. If you as an artist are absorbing information through your artistic lens, the way you absorb it artistically and creatively, the way you share it with the world can also be artistic and creative. The way you can make pieces, the way you can dance or sing or play music or perform theatrical pieces or mix it all together, that is artistic research. The way you think, talk, reflect, do, make and share the art that you're deeply interested in. So hopefully through watching the next few videos and using me as an example, it might be interesting for you or triggering for you to start thinking about what you want to do today. What kind of art are you curious about? What do you have questions to that you want to answer? Who can help you with that? And how can you do it? How can you experiment and play around? And hopefully, how will you share that with the world? So. Thank you for joining me today and hopefully I'll see you in the next videos where I'll get to show you a few more examples of exactly what I mean by the musical gestural perspective through an artistic research method. Thank you.